guys. Hey. How are you? I didn't expect to see you. Come on in. Let me show you the place. So, uh, as a lot, of, a lot of you know, I sold my place um, uh, down in Yaletown, and the link to it is going to be up in one of these. It's a little info box that pops up. Can't remember what corner that is. But um, it was a great place. Loved it. Ten years. I moved to this place. I was really excited about it. Um, but there's a lot of issues with it. So I'm going to show you guys what 1.3 million dollars gets you in Vancouver. I'm renting this. This is not my place. But I'm going to show you what you can expect to get for 1.3 million. Come on in. All right. So this is going to be some whining and complaining on my part. Uh, I'm going to be nitpicking a bit, but I'm also going to be showing you some major issues with the place and. Um, some massive safety concerns. This is one of the reasons why I didn't produce videos for a while. It was a big stress thing. I've been having to find a new place because they need me to move completely out of the unit so they can actually fix some of the things. And I said, well, if you're moving me out, I'm moving out because they offered me like $113 a night, which I'll show you some pictures of some places that you can get in Vancouver for $113 a night. From the $200 per nine, downtown Vancouver, you have the choice of some of the finest hostels money can rent. Centrally located and according to the comments on their website, not the best smelling or cleanest hostels around, they'll have you missing your home in no time. And they didn't work for me at all. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started and I'll show you some of the things. So I gotta be careful that I don't say anything, um, get myself into problems with libel or slander. So I gotta be very factual on everything that I do here. But the build builder of this building has had some issues before. They've used like such cheap countertops in a building called W Building that um, they stain. Like you put anything down on the counter, it leaves a stain. Well, they tried to go so cheap at the floor. They got this um, flooring that you can actually scrape off the laminate with your finger. <laughs> so this is green tape. I put tape down to figure out where my carpet was gonna go. Yeah, Bentley, yeah, you do that. And um, they, uh, it pulled up all the tape. So one of the reasons I have to move out of the apartment is because they have to rip up all of the flooring in the entire place and replace all the flooring because they went so cheap in the beginning. Like it just boggles my mind that you would bring product all the way from China that's totally not like how do you not have a look at this and they've been trying to do things like they've been trying to like come in with like a guy came in with a pen one day and he was going to try to touch all these marks up and i'm like no get out of here <laughs> like you're not you're not sitting in here for eight hours like touching up all these things just for two days later it's all gonna be crap again so that's one of the major issues everything all the flooring has to get ripped up so obviously they gotta move all of my stuff out of the place um, so that was a major pain in the butt. So I'm going to try to go major thing, minor thing. That's a major thing. Minor thing, these drawer fronts fall off. Um, this whole drawer fell apart. Um, you can see where it was grinding along the... Ow! Oh, I just got a slur. Son of a bitch. Oh, that hurt. Um, so yeah, this was grinding and when I pull in the drawer, this is just held on with two drywall screws into MDF, which is just a terrible mounting way. Like, and you look at all the corners, nothing fits. So when these come in, they actually rub and they knock the corners off. And when you have MDF in kitchens, it's gonna swell up. Um, things like this. I love the fact that this, this falls off all the time because it's not seated properly. But I love that it's got a little quality control sticker on it. And like, look at the cabinet. Have a look at this. Like, this is a major, I think a major scratch in it. And they just used like a little bit of touch up paint and filled it in. And then it's got like a big smash on the side of it. Um, so this is, this is what's past the um, quality control check for the building. And it like, it doesn't fit. So um, this thing like has fallen off before because it doesn't fit. They've never, they haven't fitted like anything. Like these should be flush. You can see the screws coming through on the, um, this whole thing is the cheapest kitchen I've ever seen. And I went through the original display suite for this building and it was gorgeous. Like if you were somebody who bought in this building you would have been like, oh my God, I'm getting this amazing Italian kitchen and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they're actually building some of this kitchen in the basement of this building. Like they're actually painting MDF in the basement. You know, this is cracked here. Um, they do cracks. They got to replace 
huge sections of the kitchen um, because they just went so cheap. Um, you know, like when you when you join stone, you should never see this glue line. Like you should be able to join stone perfectly, but all through it, like there's the, the glue line where they bonded the stone. So you cut this wrong and you just fill it back in with putty because it's not like anybody's gonna see it. It's not like it's part of the cabinet. All these panels are falling off the side of the things. And keep in mind, I'm the first person to ever live in this suite. Like this is brand new construction. I'm the first tenant ever. And it's all stuff that was on the initial move-in report. Like this has been like this. I'm a details guy. <laughs> so stuff like this drives me mental. Not the reason why I'm moving out. That's because of like the flooring, the electrical. Well, let's get into the electrical. This is kind of fun. So one of the major electrical concerns is this light switch here controls this lamp, or pendant, I guess you call it. And as you can see, it's not actually controlling it because what I have to do to turn this light off is I have to screw the light bulbs back in because whoever wired this place has managed to wire this switch hot. So there's no switch in the entire apartment that will turn off that. Like, how you can possibly wire a switch so you bypass, like this is so easy. The wires come in, they go into the switch, and they come out and go to the light. To be able to wire around the switch, like this is a major, um, code violation, a major um, safety concern. And this wiring issue is like throughout the building. It's brutal. Let's keep going. So another fun thing, they're gonna have to take all my beds out here, another reason I'm leaving, because they have to pull up all the carpets because what they didn't do was put carpet underlay under huge sections. There's actually another section over here, that right there. So basically, and then there's, if you come over here, there's another line, right here, where they haven't put carpet underlay. So I think they were a little bit short. So they're laying out the carpet underlay underneath the carpet, and they've got section sections, but they don't have quite enough to finish it. So I think what they did was they left little gaps on all the seams instead of just cutting one more piece and butting it up. So you step on the concrete and you step on the double-sided tape that's down. Um, that's just like ultimately cheap and brutal construction. Another thing they're gonna have to do is they have to pull up um, all of the tiles in the bathroom because they're not bonded. So when you walk on the tiles, you can hear them moving and there's cracks on all the seams. So the tiles, aren't actually stuck to the floor. And there's big gouges in some of them, like this one here. And so yeah, so these tiles move. So going back to the electrical, um, I don't know if they wired it wrong or if they've used just a really cheap um, switch. But um, as you can hear in here, when you half touch the switch, that's an electrical short inside of the switches. So this is gonna be a, someday there's, um, let's say there's 15, 10 units per floor, 50 floors. There's a lot of units in a building. Eventually when you have shorts like that, there's gonna be a fire. Like this is brutal. And especially in new construction to have electrical shorts in multiple switches throughout the, the, uh, the unit. So this is a nitpicky thing, but I sit on the toilet here and I look across and if you can see here and here, that is the bevel of the drywall where they come together and then it's been taped. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to fill this with mud and you're supposed to feather it back. And I can also see um, uh, screw, uh, screw heads and stuff like that. So what they haven't done is mudded this properly and they painted an unmudded wall. Like it's a non-finished wall that they just went, ah, throw some paint on it and it'll be fine. Um, another thing that I discovered while I was sitting here and I look beside me and there's a hole in the wall. So <laughs> where you don't really want to have a hole is behind here because when I turn on my shower, the first thing that comes on is my spray wand 
and it sprays water into a hole behind the shower. And I've been saying for five months I've been here, I'm like, hey guys, there's a hole in my shower. And every time I take a shower, because I can't, I don't turn it this way because then I get sprayed with cold water. If I turn it this way and turn it on, this thing falls over. And if I turn it the other way, it falls over. So they come now three times and they've gone, oh man, there's a hole in the wall. We're getting water behind there. And I'm like, yeah, that's, but they never come with a cock gun. <laughs> they don't cock this. <laughs> like this is, I could do it, but it's not my apartment. It's not my thing. Like I'm not supposed to actually do repairs in somebody else's apartment. So every single time I take a shower for five months, there's water going behind the wall and it goes somewhere back to being like super nitpicky. Um, when you build a shower and you put anything like this, everything should be sloped back into the, back into the shower. You shouldn't make something, it's probably the only level thing in this entire building. Um, you shouldn't make it level because water sits there. So every time I take a shower, water like literally pours out of the shower all over the floor, which is probably causing some of the bonding issue with the tiles because um, the water gets underneath there. And they'll start popping up, but all these tiles have to come up. Here's another little thing that's just nitpicky, but when you sit on the toilet, you know, I have time to look over it. You're always like, man, why is everything cracked? Like everything's bent, everything's cracked. Nothing fits, you know, like this should fit flush. I'm not an owner again, I'm just renting, but I am legitimately pissed off for whoever bought this place and in this building. Um, if I was buying in here, if I owned in here, I would be suing the developer. Um, there's no compensation. It's a lot of stress on somebody. Like you move into a place and you get it all settled, you get it set up the way you want, and then, you know, they want to rip all the floors up, they want to rip all the carpeting up, they want to rip the tiles up. They got to rip the bathroom part, that shower, because water's gotten in there for so long, there's going to be water damage. They're going to have to go into that. Um, it's, it's disruptive. It's cost me a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of aggravation. But um, just the fact that they, it, to me, this is not a, a statement, but to me, it feels like this is a bait and switch. You know, you show somebody one level of product that you're gonna get this type of countertops and this types of floors and this types of um, cabinets and stuff and fit and finish. And then you deliver something that's, to me, this is not acceptable. This is a very subpar. Um, I would never accept this as my own home. Um, yeah, and even as an insurance company, like I wouldn't insure somebody in the suite like with hot wired switches and light fixtures that, that short circuit. Like I'll show you another one that shorts. This one here. You can hear that's going to start a fire someday. You can actually see a little bit of black in here. It's bad. Great location, great views, great everything. This is not something that, uh, again, to move out for a month to let them fix all these deficiencies and there's just more popping up. Every time you look at something, you're like, well, that's gotta get fixed. So I'm out of here. Good thing is I'm not moving far. I'm going to that building right there. Uh, I'm excited about the move. It's a bit more money, um, more than I wanted to spend, but it's the Vancouver market and it just keeps going up. So a lot of frustration. So that's why I'm taking out my anger on this video. So yeah, if you're gonna buy from the developer on this, I personally, I would look into all the complaints that they've had in the past because I wouldn't buy from them personally. All right, so I'm all moved out, ready to get out of this dump. And just like the guys who built this building, couldn't care less. So on to the next place. Oh, save electricity. Gotta turn off all the lights before I leave. Good thing I bought the LED bulbs so I can actually touch these. Actually, I had to spend more money on bulbs so I wouldn't burn my hand to turn the light off.